Hi guys, um, you're welcome back uh, to my course. It's financial accounting made simple. Uh, my name is Sonia Lulua Femi Akinsunde, and today we'll be continuing from where we picked up the last time. So let's jump right into the course. So um, for the course approach, um, if you are familiar with my videos, you know most of the time I have course approach, especially uh, when I'm talking about calculations. Majority of the time when I talk about CRE, I don't bother to put um, course approach. Now, um, for my calculation courses, it's imperative that I tell you that uh, you have to have an open mind and uh, uh, you have to release yourself of any form of fear. Accounting is very, very simple in as much as uh, you can add, subtract, multiply, and uh, divide. That's the only uh, knowledge you need in order to excel in accounting. If you can go to the market and make a purchase and know exactly how much you are expected to pay wherever you're going to, uh, that means that uh, you are an, an accountant. So um, another thing is um, it requires your commitment and seriousness. That means that you must be ready uh, to practice and practice and practice until you become uh, a pro, as they say, practice makes, uh, makes perfect. So um, let's, let's get into the course. Now for our learning objective, at the end of this uh, lecture, I expect you to have a working knowledge of uh, the meaning of the evaluation of uh, non-current assets. Also, I, expected to, I expect you to know uh, the, the accounting uh, entries that are required uh, in order for us to be able to uh, account for uh, uh, evaluation of non-current assets. And as usual, I will always give you uh, examples and assignments so that you can practice and become better at accounting. So evaluation of non-current assets. So what do we mean by the word revaluation? Of course, if you have watched my video, if you are here to watch my video on uh, non-current asset, I suggest you go and watch uh, that video first before you watch this. Uh, it talks about non-current asset, what non-current asset is and uh, the different classes of non-current assets that would have. So when we talk about evaluation, assets are known to be valued at uh, the original price, which is at the historical cost uh, price of the assets. But where the economic uh, uh, reality states that the market value of such an asset has, uh, has gone up, it is important for us to have an upward review of that particular asset. So let me take a typical example. Let's assume I bought a motor vehicle for 1 million Naira uh, three years ago. Now, that vehicle was bought three years ago for 1 million uh, Naira. Let's assume the expected life of the motor vehicle uh, is expected to to be let's say 100 uh, let's say let's say um, let's say the the motor vehicle is expected to last for 2 years that's the expected useful life of the motor vehicle is 2 years that means i would depreciate the motor at 500000 per year is that not so so at the end of the second year the motor would have been fully uh, depreciated but now let's assume that there is inflation in the land and after 2 years that car that i bought 2 years ago for 1 million in the market now sells for 4 million because of the price of dollar has gone up, the price of uh, the, the inflation has gone up, and this has uh, driven the, the price of goods and services to go up. So the car that I bought for, two, for 1 million two years ago, I can afford to sell that same car now for between 2.5 million to 3 million, if not more. So what happens then is that I will need to do what a revaluation in my books of accounts. I will need to revalue it to, re, to reflect the current uh, market price of that particular goods. Of course, uh, the essence is to uh, be able to negotiate better. So it will show the true fair value of that particular, it will show the market value of that particular uh, uh, car in the market. Now, why do we normally do this or why do companies do this now? It will help if I want to sell the car. It will help me make more money from selling the car. That is the truth. So if it records the economic value of the car now, it will help me to sell the car now at a higher price. That's what it does. And it helps in sales negotiation also. So uh, that's what evaluation uh, does. 
The same way, if it goes the other way and we don't have a, an inflation, let's assume we have a deflation, that means the price of goods and services have gone way down. Of course, the price of that car will drop also, as the case may be. Now, how do we account for uh, evaluation of non-current asset? How do we account for the evaluation of non-current asset? Now, there are six steps to evaluating uh, non-current assets. Now, before we go into those steps, that we use to evaluate uh, non-current asset. The first thing is, don't forget, I told you in the previous video that whenever an asset is in the asset account, it will carry its historical cost until one, it is sold, two, it is traded in, or three, it is revalued. Until any of these three uh, things happen, the asset will always remain in the asset account. So it will be carried in the books of account from one year to another, to another, to another, to another, until one of these three things happens. Is that it is ended up, uh, uh, it ends up being sold or traded in, or it is revalued as the case may uh, be. So now let's jump into the accounting entries uh, to determine the revaluation. So the first thing is, uh, we have to transfer the assets from the asset account to our revaluation account. So we transfer the assets from the asset account to our revaluation account. So we open a revaluation account, then transfer the assets by what? Crediting the asset account and debiting our revaluation account. So what do we do? We debit the the revaluation the account and credit the asset account. Don't forget, assets will normally have a debit balance. So in order to remove the asset from the account, what do we do? We credit the asset account and we debit our revaluation account for receiving value because yes, the revaluation account is going to receive value automatically. So the next thing we want to do is to determine our accumulated depreciation. We need to determine our accumulated depreciation. If you are yet to watch my video on depreciation and how you calculate depreciation, it is important uh, you go and watch how uh, to calculate depreciation. So you determine the accumulated depreciation. Now, after you have determined the accumulated depreciation, what do we do? The accumulated depreciation will normally have a credit balance. So in order to reduce what is in that account, we need to debit our accumulated depreciation account. So you debit accumulated depreciation account or accumulated provision for depreciation account as the case may be. And what do you do? You credit your revaluation account credit the asset revaluation account, credit the revaluation account. So after you've done step one and step two, the next thing will be to find the difference, to find the difference between our debit and credit side. Of Obviously one will be higher than the other. So you find the difference. The difference will now be the balance of that uh, depreciation of that uh, car of that asset that has not been utilized, the depreciation of the asset that has not been utilized. So, for example, I buy a car for 400,000, it's expected to last for four years. I've only used it for one year and I want to revalue the asset. That means that uh, I'll transfer accumulated depreciation for one year, which is 100,000. I will have 300,000 that is yet to be utilized. So, that will now form my balance carried down. So, we check out the difference between the debit and the credit that gives us the balance carried down. And uh, lastly, or uh, the fourth thing we need to do is to determine the balancing. So when we determine the balance, that will give us uh, what we need to do. Now, the fourth thing we need to do is to transfer the assets back into the asset account. That's after you've done your balance brought down, balance carried down. So transfer the assets back into the asset accounts. When we transfer the asset back into our asset account, then uh, the fifth set is we have to determine the difference between uh, the two accounts in order to determine whether we have a revaluation gain or you have a revaluation loss. Now, if we have a debit side difference, if the difference in the two sides is on the debit side, that means we have a revaluation gain. That means we have a revaluation gain. If the difference is on the debit side. That means we we'll have a revaluation gain. So what do we do when we have a revaluation gain? The debit revaluation account and credit revaluation gain account. 
the debit where evaluation account and credit evaluation gain account. Now, if there is a loss on disposal, if there is a loss on disposal, what do you do? We we'll debit our, uh, we we'll, we'll credit our revaluation account. We we'll credit our revaluation account and debit our revaluation loss account. And debit our revaluation loss account. We we'll credit revaluation accounts and debit revaluation loss accounts. That's what we need to do. So, so it depends on where uh, the balance is. So let's look at this example. Hot Ice Limited, which, which acquires a building four years ago for 2 million Naira and depreciated using straight line method is expected to be used for 20 years. Uh, no residual value is required and the revalued amount is 15 million. So how do we do that? Now, this is the asset account, which is model building accounts. Is that not so? This is the, the, the building account. So what do we do? The asset would remain in the building account as 2 million. Is that not so? What is the first step we need to do? We need to transfer the asset away from the asset account. How do we do that? We transfer this to the revaluation account. So 2 million goes to the revaluation account. 2 million goes to the revaluation account. Now, the revaluation account is receiving 2 million from what? Building, from office complex, from the building account, from the office complex account. Building account receives 2 million. Now, what's the next step to determine the accumulated depreciation? In order to determine the accumulated depreciation, this is 2 million divided by 20. That means that it will be depreciated at the rate of 100,000 Naira for each year. That is for 20 years. That will give us 2 million. Now, we have been told that the building, the office complex has been, uh, has been used for four years. That means we have an accumulated depreciation of four years, which is what? 4 million Naira. I be 400,000 Naira. 400,000 Naira. And that's why we have this 400,000 here. So the next thing to do in step three is to determine the balance, the difference. You can see this is 2 million, but you have 400,000 here. In order to make it balance 2 million, 2 million, that's why we had to. This 1.6 million now is the amount that is yet to be depreciated. So we'll bring that down. That's 2 million and 2 million on this side. Now, this balance will be carried forward. So you can see it here as balance brought down. You can see it here as balance brought down. Now, this balance brought down. The next thing you want to do is step four. Step four says that we should transfer the assets, the revalued amount of the asset back to the asset account. You can see building 15 million. It is being transferred back to the asset account. And it will remain in the asset account until when it is either sold, revalued, or traded in again. But in this case now, it will transfer back to the asset account. Now, you can see we have 1.6 million here that has been brought forward. That means we have 13.4 million, which is our what? Revaluation gain. That revaluation gain will be transferred to our revaluation gain account, which is later transferred to our capital account, as the case may be. So with that being said, I hope uh, you'll be able to uh, solve this. You can play this back over and over again so that you'll be able to grab uh, what I've said. So like I normally do, I'll give you an assignment. So I have an assignment for you here today. It's on evaluation. So I want you to practice this. It's very, very simple. It's just maybe a bit technical. If you have any challenge, just let me know. So um, don't forget, I told you my right results. I had F9 in financial accounting and uh, I'm now good at it because it took years to practice. So I want to believe you can also do this. I want you to always draw um, inspiration from my result. Just had one C6 in the whole of the results, which was very, very bad. But that's how the journey is. And I hope that you learn one or two things from this. Failure is the ability to start again more intelligently. It's very, very important. And your mindset is very, very important. It's a critical factor to whether you would actually uh, make headway in life. 
And that is why uh, the, what differentiates ordinary from extraordinary people is their mindset. And numbers don't lie. Uh, it only shows pattern. If you study uh, for 30 minutes every day, you are different from somebody that studies for three hours every day. Results will always show. So um, you can reach me on any of these social media platforms if you have any challenge. And uh, I want to thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in my next course. So um, that's, that's about that. So I'll see you in my next course.